In this video, I'll try to demonstrate how you conduct space analysis. And space analysis basically compare two entities, space available and the dental arch, and we usually measure from the first molar to the mesial of the first molar, to that area. That space you have, space along the arch, regardless of the position of the teeth, that's available space. And then required space, and required space is the size of individual teeth, mesiodistal width of individual teeth. If you measure all the teeth in that segment individually and you add up the mesiodistal width, that's the space you need to fit the teeth or required space. So again, in space analysis, we compare available space to required space. And if these two are equal to each other, there is no crowding and there is no spacing. If required space is higher than available, it means you, have, you need more than you have, and that would be crowding, and the opposite is true for spacing. So the easiest way to calculate how much available space you have is to divide the arch into four segments. You measure these segments individually, and then you add them up, and that's your available space, and then you start measuring the teeth. And these four segments are from the mesial of the first molar, here. Usually the easiest way is to the mesial of the canine. You want to be in the middle of, of the arch. So if the canine is outside the arch, two buckle or two lingual, you don't want to actually follow the canine. You, you want to still be in the middle of the arch. So that's the first segment. From the mesial of first molar to mesial of canine. Next segment is from where you stopped to the uh, midline and then from where you stopped to the other canine like in this example the canine is my line so you just pick any point it can be here or it can be here it doesn't really matter as long as you start the next segment from where you stopped so if I pick this this point then my next segment will be from this point where I stopped to the mesial of the other first molar once I measure these four segments I have available space so let's try to measure them on this cast so again, I go from the mesial of first molar to the mesial of canine in the arch. You don't want to go buccal or lingual. You want to stay within the arch. And so for this segment, it is it's more than 10 millimeters, more than 15, it's 16 millimeters, almost exactly 16. If it was somewhere in between two lines, then there is another way to, to determine how much that is. But for this segment, it's 15, it's actually 16. So the next segment is for, from exactly where I stopped to the midline. And that's my second segment. And in this case, it is 12 point something. And that something you can determine by finding which of these lines lines up. And in this case, it's the three and a half or almost four. So that would be 12.4 and then I move on to the next segment from, from where I stopped to the mesial of the other canine or pick a point if the canine is rotated and in this case it's, it's almost the same and then from exactly where I stopped to the mesial of the other first molar again in the middle of the arch and that is in this case 14.4 so 14.4 you write them down you add them up now to measure required space I have to measure each tooth individually so I'll go to the second premolar and you want to measure the widest mesiodistal width at the point where the tooth is supposed to contact adjacent teeth if it was well aligned. So if the tooth is rotated, you need to rotate your caliper with it. With it. If the tooth is buccal or lingual, you need to move with it. So in this case, this is a mesial distal of 3.5 and it's 8.4. So, and then I'll move on to 3.4 and you see it's totally blocked out buccally. So I'll measure it this way, and you can see the measurement, 
and it's seven point seven point nine. So three four is seven point nine. You write it down. Move on to the canine, and you position your caliper whatever way is ne is needed to get the mesial distal width. Like it can be, for example, buckle on the mesial lingual on the distal doesn't matter as long as you get the proper width. In this case, the canine is seven point seven point five. Incisor. You can see this one is lingual. So I'm I'm coming with my caliper from the lingual side. You measure it, you move on to the next one, it's more buckle, measure from the buckle, again at the widest. Sometimes you need to tilt your caliper, like this canine for example. I need to go, I need to go this way. So you measure that canine, measure the four and the five, and then you add them up, and then you can compare available to required so it's available minus required equals the net space you have negative crowding positive spacing